Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. Today, we're talking Bitcoin, low time preference design, and the strategy and psychology of selling luxury goods. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is Shay Henning, who's the owner of ATX Record Players, where he creates high-quality German-inspired record consoles. I think you're really going to enjoy our conversation today. But before we get to the interview, we have this week's Bitcoin Meetup Spotlight, and this week it is the Knoxville Bitcoin Network. Knoxville Bitcoin was born when a few people in Knoxville who were all separately trying to start a Knoxville Bitcoin meetup ran into each other on Twitter and joined forces. The Knoxville Bitcoin network was quickly born after that in April of 2022. Knoxville Bitcoin is a place where those who are interested in Bitcoin can share their ideas with others. They hope to further Bitcoin education and advocate for Bitcoin adoption in local businesses. If you can't make a meetup or just want to see what they're up to, they also provide slide decks for each meetup and post them on their site for anyone to download and use. You can follow them on Twitter at KnoxvilleBTC or find them at KnoxvilleBitcoin.com. And if you're not in the Knoxville area, you can always use the Oshi app to find the Bitcoin meetup nearest to you. You can find that in the App Store or scroll on down to the show notes and find the link there. Now, we're going to get to our interview with Shay right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. Shay, welcome to the podcast. Hey, happy to be here. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Yep. Here you go. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? You know, as soon as I got into like the workforce in 2008, the economy collapsed and I was kind of like, you know, 2008 crisis happened and I got super interested in what the hell was going on because I had no clue. And then uh, I was listening to a lot of AM radio at the time. And then uh, <laughs> um, they kind of introduced me to some new ideas. And then I hopped on the Ron Paul, you know, revolution thing and read, you know, Ayn Rand and uh, Economics in One Lesson and Austrian Economics and Mises. And then I was politically active kind of and was trying to, you know, going to tea party rallies and stuff. And then, you know, nothing really, I didn't really understand it that well. And then nothing kind of happened and there was no inflation like I thought. And I was kind of perplexed and I thought it was, well, maybe I'm not right here. And, uh, and I fully didn't understand it. So then, but through the Ron Paul libertarian, um, stuff, you know, Bitcoin murmurs started coming through and I looked at it and I was like, you know, the one thing I did have was the technical capabilities to understand decentralization mm-hmm. and, um, the, you know, encryption and stuff. So I was just like, you know, wrote it off. And then 2017 bull run, I did some gambling in it, you know, and I bought some and then sold it, you know, but I always believed in it. I was like, well, it would be great if it worked, but I just, I doubt it if it's ever going to work, you know. And then uh, I kind of just, like I, I wanted to get Bitcoin. I thought, you know, it was good, but I just never got around to it. I, I just invested in my business and invested in, um, you know, myself and stuff. And then 2020 happened and then basically went through, you know, what am I, I got my treasury, I had a bunch of cash in my treasury and I was realizing this isn't good. It's going to, you know, inflation's coming. And then I found Michael Saylor and basically he just led me right down the thought process that I was currently going through. And then I pretty much just, yeah, Michael Saylor just basically mentored me into 
the full belief. And then I found Nick Carter and Robert Frieza. And then I was like, this isn't just money. This is politically, you know, this is all my libertarian stuff I studied 10 years earlier through technology. And I was like, uh, you know, we're not going to win this politically, but maybe we could win it technologically. What's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish that everyone understood? You just got to know what, you know, basically uh, the fiat system and how evilly, disgustingly corrupt and horrible it is for humanity and how, you know, really what, what money is to really learn what money is and then realizing what, you know, a cap supply of incorruptible decentralized money and what that could really do for not only you and your business, but for the world and humanity in general. And then, you know, really learning what money is. And um, because it's the, the most shocking thing is, it's like, we all use it, we all work for it, we all dream about it. Nobody really can tell you what money is. And it's just crucial to uh, understand what it really is. What's the Bitcoin resource that you most recommend to other people? I always try to, when I'm uh, distributing Bitcoin propaganda, I always try to find the person <laughs> and see where he's, uh, <laughs> where that person kind of is. You know, if, if they're really in the finance person, you know, you can send them to Parker Lewis's stuff. If they're more politically active, you can send them to, you know, Breed Love or philosophically driven, you can send them to Breed Love. And I just try to tailor it to my, uh, who, uh, you know, I want to, uh, orange pill. And, uh, but for me, it was Michael Saylor because he's more of the corporate, uh, strategy, corporate finance kind of, uh, angle at it. And, you know, you just got to find the angle of what that person is and, um, and try to, uh, you know, push them that way. And like, obviously the Bitcoin standard, that's probably the one I, you know, I try to, but if they're not like that sophisticated, you know, you can send them to, um, you know, different resources that are just a little bit more, uh, you know, easier concepts to understand. Just people that, you know, can break it down to an easier understanding. So this is a podcast that business owners are going to be listening to. So I'd like to ask this question to kind of learn from uh, another peer. The next question is this. Beyond Bitcoin, what is a resource or some sort of tool that's been helpful to you or your business recently? You know, my goal was always to get into high-end luxury goods. So, you know, I went to a lot of e-commerce meetups and stuff and I just, they're trying to just sell like, uh, you know, fiat shit on Amazon and just pump, pump, pump. And I had to take a step back and be like, I don't want to do that. I want to build high quality things and sell it in that specific way. So I started researching how, how do they sell Rolexes? How do they sell, you know, Rolls Royces? How do they sell? And then I found like books online and like, um, how to sell luxury products and it's basically the complete opposite of everything. Like you want exclusivity. You don't want to bend your knee to your customers. You want your customers to come to you. You know, it's uh it's a wholly different mindset to sell something and get top dollar for it. And you gotta make your customers feel special. So um, you know, you you create VIP lists and you create, you know, uh more exclusive and more exclusive sales funnels to um to filter out to get the the really interested uh, and the clients are way better. So you get, you know, you not only uh, deal with better clients, you know, I'm dealing with high net worth individuals now and it builds my network. You sell them a record player they love it. They, uh, you know, it's, uh, so I'm going to, what I would say is, you know, learning, um, you know, a different form of e-commerce and, and building the trust to, for a guy to send $20,000 to you through the internet and trust you that you're going to deliver um, a high end product. So just the innovation of um, being able to run a, a high end business on e-commerce is the, uh, is something that kind of, I feel like I was kind of forefronting it because I never really seen anybody do it before. So I'm just, I mean, obviously yeah. people have, but uh, you know, it's just my kind of niche. I love to talk about focus on. Is definitely not the norm. And that's one of the things I was I was hoping to get from you today, hearing about the importance of, of value over just trying to like 
pump whatever you can sell out to the market. And so hopefully that'll factor into a little bit more of our conversation today. But before that, we have one last question. We call it our arbitrary but insightful question. And it's this, as a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? Yeah, that's a tough one. I would say, why not? I mean, if you have, uh, you know, a lot of people suffer from self-limiting beliefs and uh, the norms and everything. And I guess, you know, I'm I'm a romanticist, you know, romantic from, you know, I love Ayn Rand. So I'm always thinking of, you know, you know, who's going to stop me? You know, why not try this? Why not? Um, why not try to sell something for a lot of money on e-commerce, you know, when everyone else is trying to just shill, you know, um, supplements and stuff, you know, it's, uh, you know, snake oil and, and this kind of stuff. So it's always, you know, I guess that I was, I'm kind of a, a why not and, um, you know, what could possibly be and thinking, um, in that direction. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin-focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard-earned profits and retained earnings. And Linkster is not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting Linkster.com. That's L-Y-N-C-S-T-E-R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart Vellus Commerce doesn't just build, they bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project's success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future proof your business in the coming age of hyper Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. Shay, I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for the insight you've already shared. And we're just getting started here. Could you share with us a little bit about your business, how you got started uh, creating what you create, which is is high end record players, record consoles? Yeah. Could you share with us a little bit about that? Maybe even give some people some insight, potentially uh, future customers listening to you right now. So just share with us the, the benefit of, you know, high quality sound and what you do, why you think it's important and valuable. Yeah, I guess how I started was, you know, I worked. Uh, I worked at a hedge fund and I worked in finance and I was a financial analyst and I just, you know, I was sitting in a cubicle doing Excel all day. And then I started, uh, you know, I always loved to tinker and monkey around with stuff. So I started, um, you know, my friends were getting these cheap Crosley record players and, you know, spinning records was cool and stuff. So I, I, but I was like, you know, I think I remember these really cool old record consoles with legs on them and stuff. So I went on Craigslist and bought one for like 50 bucks and then I brought it home and I was like well I could this record player sucks I think I could put one in and then I put it in and I put different speakers in it and I, I put it on Etsy and it sold and I made like $500 and I was like whoa this I can't believe it sold you know and then I was like well maybe I could do it again so I did it again and I did it again and it, I just kept going and I was basically it kept going until so like my condo was stacked full of these things in my like 700 square foot condo I had stacked to the the ceiling. I was having like semi trucks pulling up to my condo every day. And like my neighbors were kind of like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and so I was like, well, I got to get out of the, the living room floor um, at some point. So then I went to a storage unit, then a two car garage. And then I built a, sh a shed and then uh, now I got a shop here. So, you know, it's just been steady uh, and doing restorations. And then, um, I sold one to Jesse James, the motorcycle guy, um, um, rest, uh, motorcycle custom maker. And he was like, dude, you got to build your own custom consoles with your own brand. And then I was like, once he said that, I was like, well, if he says it should, and it kind of opened my mind 
to doing that. And I tried that and those went over great. And then now I'm just, uh, you know, refining it and doing different stuff with these custom ones now. And that's kind of um, the future where I'm headed. So yeah, Jesse James, uh, he was my childhood hero. He's basically the one that uh, watching his TV shows as a kid um, inspired me to, to get into the, the art form of, you know, I see this art form of, uh, you know, building custom things and, and building high, like he's always been like the, you know, the guy that's always been really passionate about building high and, you know, craftsman made goods and, um, you know, made stuff in the United States. So then I, and then I realized your life is so much better heading towards a low time preference, um, building high quality things. Like I said before, your clientele gets better. Um, you know, your, your brand gets better. Your, uh, um, you know, doing low quantity, high dollar stuff, you have less problems. You have fewer customers, uh, you know, everything like that. So, and, you know, I, and then like I had to learn e-commerce. So I was going to these e-commerce meetups in Austin and these guys were just about, you know, go to China, um, get, find some shit, you know, put it on Amazon, sell it and repeat that over and over and over again. And I was like, you know, I'm not selling foam rollers. I have, I can't even wake up in the morning and sell 10,000 foam rollers a month and, you know, or supplements or, you know, just, just tell them the supplement will cure their problems and, and blah, blah, blah. blah. Like I, I literally can't even wake up and even start scheming that stuff. And then, I, you know, you start getting in the Bitcoin community on Twitter and they're all about, you know, low time preference, um, high quality things, the architecture, there's guys on there, you know, talking about old architecture. And I was like, Oh, wow. And, and then as you, you accumulate more Bitcoin, I feel like psychologically somehow you just start heading towards a more lower time preference life and steers you that direction even more, I guess. So I want to talk a little bit more about the low time preference, high quality relationship. But before that, could you share with us a little bit about, well, first of all, are you more custom now or are you doing refurb still kind of like what how how much are you doing refurb how much are you doing custom and then also maybe uh I, I personally and i'm guessing other people who are listening usually people who listen to podcasts like to learn new things i'd be interested to know kind of what what is it that makes high end high end obviously the one-on-one craftsmanship but also you know part of the difficulty with with um records from my experience is that usually and i have one sitting right over here off screen it's <laughs> this you know you know, $75 record player that's also AM, FM radio and whatever else. And yeah. the sound just isn't that good. So maybe records are the best way to listen to music, but you're listening to them on an inferior player. So maybe okay. if you could uh, share with us a little bit about like how, where your business is today, how much is, is that custom versus refurb? And then what are the things that really make a difference when it comes to high quality record consoles? There's only so many 1960s German record consoles left on the market because uh, obviously there's a limited supply cap on them. They're not making them anymore. So, and then kind of the uh, negative things about my business was I'm the, I'm pretty much the guy that started restoring them and putting them on Instagram and building a following. So then that caused all of these guys on the internet to go out and buy them um, to restore them themselves so I'm kind of, that business is kind of a victim of its own success where now I got, like I've affected like the whole national market for these things. When I was buying them, they're like $300 on eBay. Now they're running like $1,000, $2,000 on eBay. And it's just, uh, so I got a competition now for my own product. And then I even have these guys call me and ask me, Hey, I just bought an old school record console. Can you tell me how to restore it? And I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I mean, so I just realized that business is not going to last forever anyway. So I'm headed full into the custom ones. I love it. I get to be creative. I get to build my own brands, which is where, you know, the vision is and where uh, the future is for me is having an actual brand that I own versus just a restoration shop. So, uh, so definitely I'm headed towards all custom and having that uh, be my, my thing. And then, yeah, about the, uh, the 
the fidelity aspect is yeah it's uh you know digital music is kind of just the you know cheap you know fiat thing is you're streaming music you can have any song in the world at any time you can skip through all your songs it, it really has no meaning you know back when you um you had to buy that. You had to save up, buy that album. You started at track one, you listen to that to track 13 and you listen to it all the time because you spent $20 at Sam Goody to get that thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, you're going to listen to it versus just having so much, so much content now. There's no, you don't really appreciate it versus you buy a custom, you know, art sound setup and you spend the money for a record and it, you know, not only does it mean something to do, you're going to actually focus on what the artist is trying to say through the album and the nuances. And you can actually hear the nuances because, you know, a record is higher fidelity sound. That's for sure. I mean, the streaming stuff is mostly um, compressed music where they strip out um, a lot of the sound waves out of it that you can't audibly hear. But those sound waves still interact with the sound waves you can hear. And it, it changes the sound um, from what it should be a little bit. So, and honestly, record console is just, it's one part audio and it's two parts visual. And that's pretty much my, I'm more of a visual guy. And that's why, um, you know, like audio files, they're all about sound quality, sound, sound, sound. But then it just ends up in the like huge rack of wires and shit that you have to put in a room and nobody's wives want that. You know, so if you combine it into audio and visual, you know, it's uh, you can create a work of art and put it in a living room and you can get both things and your wife will sign off on it. And uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, so it's it's a you know, it's a status symbol. You know, most people are just going to listen to fiat music and rich guys are going to have a custom record console that with tubes and, um, you know, all the old school stuff that's pretty fascinating to people that come into your living room. Maybe could you share with us a little bit about, you know, how you began accepting Bitcoin into your business? Why'd you begin moving that way? I know you're not uh, maybe as far along that way as you'd, as you'd like to be based off of conversations offline, but can you just share with us about how you began accepting it? Maybe some of your experiences when it comes to that as well. Yeah, I mean, when I first started, I put it in my email. So I was like, you know, I'll take Bitcoin, but nobody ever, um, nobody ever said anything about it. And then, you know, in 2020, I felt the call that it was a moral imperative to start <laughs> pushing Bitcoin. So, uh, uh, so I, you know, I put it in my emails and then I was like, how could I really, and then I really started thinking how, like, I really do want Bitcoin number one. Um, so how could I entice my customers to really pay me with Bitcoin? So, uh, and I'm, I'm all about more exclusivity and making my customers feel more special. Uh, so I was like, well, you know, and that kind of, I wish I could kind of preach this to other Bitcoiners and, um, you know, instead of uh, giving discounts to paying Bitcoin and giving up some of your leverage, uh, by offering, by lowering your prices, but you can, what I do is, uh, you know, Hey, if you, if you pay in Bitcoin, uh, I'll put you at the top of the list. Cause I have a waiting list for my stuff now. So I'll put you at the top of the list and you'll get next in line for those who mm. um, pay in Bitcoin. So then it kind of gives them, you know, without lowering my price, I can, you know, put, give them a, you know, preferred customer access, um, to my products and stuff like that. And I feel like that's the way to do it, to, to force people is to build a high-end brand. And then, you know, at some point, probably in the next year or two, I think I'm going to go full Bitcoin. And once my list is long enough, I'm just going to be like, it's Bitcoin or nothing. You don't get it, you know? It's, and then I can fully have the, all the leverage to just twist their arms um, to give me only Bitcoin. And that would be, that's definitely the direction I'm headed. And, you know, right now, I'm, this year I've sold, I've had three sales in Bitcoin and um, I guess it all starts somewhere, you know, you can't just, uh, you know, expect it. And I'm honestly on the phone now, people are like, yeah, I, I'd like to pay in Bitcoin, but uh, not right now because they just got, you know, 
the bull market just they're underwater right now in their sure. <laughs> in their Bitcoin portfolio. And it's so it's a little more difficult when Bitcoin's low too. So and it's just like I said before, it's it's more of a moral thing where I'm like, you know, I got ten thousand people on my email list. Every time I send out emails, ten thousand people are gonna see the Bitcoin logo and then it's accepted here and see that I only want Bitcoin and you know, it just helps, you know, any all the minds I can change is my duty to just try to push Bitcoin to the forefront. You know, whatever. That's what I pretty much now is just every day I wake up and how can I, you know, push Bitcoin forward and push myself forward. Somebody's got to get the circular economy going. and You know, it's only us that can do it. I mean, so. And being in Austin is a great place just because there's a lot more Bitcoin going in Austin than a lot of other places. So I feel like, especially assuming you have a, uh, at least some customers local, that's a, a great place to do it as opposed to, you know, random town in the USA. You're just going to have a lot fewer Bitcoiners. So it seems like it's a good place to be based. Do you have a decent amount of local customers or with an email list of 10,000, they're spread out throughout the United States and maybe world? Yeah, maybe 30, 40% are local. So I do ship quite a few of them. Yeah. Mm. Well, I would love for you to share a little bit about how you view uh, time preference and quality when it comes to your work. It's one of those things, once again, where I feel like it it, it plays into the uh, any craft pretty well, where if you have money that encourages low time preference thinking, then it's also going to encourage people taking more time to create high quality things than just pump out the the foam rollers right so yeah. maybe could you just share with us some of how how uh, maybe how you were already thinking that way before bitcoin and how bitcoin may have played into how you've begun to uh, kind of maybe double down on that thought process i think i think subconsciously you know when you're on a fiat uh hamster wheel and you don't like you're not really actively thinking about it but you know you know, I knew about 2% inflation. Like I knew that I knew my money was burning at 2% at the least, you know, if not more. The, only it wasn't later that I realized they were even lying when they said it was 2%. I learned that like last year. So I, I thought my money was burning at 2%, but you know, you want to get rid of your cash. Like I still subconsciously at when I just had cash in my bank account, I knew I had to get rid of it. And, you know, I didn't want to save it. So you just want to, um, you know, I didn't want to invest it in the stock market because I feel like I'm not an investor, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. And obviously that's the, that's the psychology where it's pushing you into the risk, pushing you out into the risk um, curve. You know, as your money devalues, you got to go, you know, faster and faster and faster and your bills get more expensive and more expensive. And you, you're rushing to just, you know, do cheaper and cheaper and stuff and you get lost in that competition. You got to cut prices and uh, your margins get lower. So then you got to take stuff out of your product. And, you know, obviously that's how inflation just devolves all your products. You know, we used to have really all nice products under a gold standard and now they're just, you know, plastic shit that just falls apart when you touch them. And it's, uh, you know, it's all subconscious, kind of a subconscious thing. I mean, I awaken to it last year that this was happening and then i I don't realize and i was like wow if i just had a money that um appreciated in value then the fear of you know the fear of having to race to you know catch up to your 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 increasing expenses and stuff it kind of starts fading away and um, obviously this is my first bear market so i'm kind of waiting i'm sure my time preference will start lower you know it's just once we go back up here but you know bitcoin really changes your psychology and this it's so it's so bizarre how this line of computer code can just transform your whole thinking and you know my dream would be what if i could just do one record council a year and spend all my um mm. spend a whole year's worth of time just building one custom record council knowing um knowing that i have a you know, a treasury that can afford to be able to do that, you know, that's going up in value and I don't have to be worried if something happens, you know, or I don't have to constantly be on that, that rushing, that rat race rushing 
anxiety um, mindset. And so it's just, uh, it, and, you know, I don't know, maybe in Bitcoin, we can be even better than what, you know, maybe I could do one record council my entire life and put everything, my whole life work into one, one project. You know, I don't know how far mm. it could really go. On, yeah. Like, truth, so. Yeah. Well, in some ways it, it, it sounds the idea seems a little ridiculous, but at the same time, like if you have money that is increasing in value over time, if you have enough of it, then you, you don't have to just go and do some menial task every single day in order to make enough money to put food on the table and gas in your tank or, you know, whatever we might be using by then as far as transportation and things like that. But I, I think it's, it's such an interesting idea. You know, you, you need to be, whether you're creating something that's high end or something that is uh, a little more affordable in light of someone's um, maybe monthly paycheck, you, you need to be creating something that's high quality because if we are moving increasingly towards Bitcoin, we have money that uh, continues to increase in value. We need to make sure that we're creating things that people are willing to part with their money now for and creating something like a record player, even if it's not uh, necessary to daily life, it will because of the sound quality, because of the visual aspect, because it keeps your wife happy. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able you'll, you'll be able to. Uh, incentivize people to pay for something like that. So I think it's a really interesting idea. It's, it's an interesting conversation. I feel like you just, you know, because we're so early on, you, we're just scratching the surface of as far as what's possible. Yeah. And I, I fully, uh, you know, if there's one thing I'd like to push the Bitcoin community to be is go high quality. I don't care what your product or service is. Um, you need to be going towards high quality. And then not only that, read up on high quality products and services in and how to sell it like selling something that's high quality is completely different than selling something that's fiat crap like on amazon it's uh you got to do everything opposite like even if you have a podcast or you're selling a book like try to go high end i mean if you're putting everything you got into it and it's it's uh you know you're trying to make it as high quality as in and you feel like your product is a high quality product don't sell it like you know a walmart product you know like and there's a lot of different things you got to do. If you don't hit check these boxes off in your customers' minds, they're not going to value it. You know, you got to kind of be exclusive. And, you know, if you read this book, you go on Amazon, buy, um, buy this book, The Luxury Strategy. There's like a list of things where it's just like, like you know, you got to have exclusivity. You almost got to treat your customers, uh, you know, don't let your customers twist your arm. Don't let them get the upper hand on you. This is, you know, you do, you're building art, you're building high quality things like going to buy a, a Rolls Royce, is a different experience than going to CarMax, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you just got to build that experience and feeling more special, make your customers feel more special and more special until, um, you know, it's like a privilege for them. And my dream would be to have my stuff being sold on a secondary market where if I could build the market to where guys want these and they know they're going to go up in value. Just same thing with Bitcoin. Like they know my, the works of mm -hmm. art that they get from me, that it's going to be worth more than more than 15 years than, you know, and it's an investment that they, you know, an art investment, then you basically have a, a never ending printing press. Oh, I don't like to say printing press, but uh, you have, a, <laughs> you have a never ending uh, client market. If they know what they get, it, they're getting a, you know, a deal on it. Like Rolex, their prices go up every single year. And you know, if you buy Rolex five years from now, it's going to be worth more. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the dream that I have. The vision I have is to be able to, um, my product will be, uh, you know, sought after, um, on secondary markets and, and you can buy my product and know over time, it's going to be worth more someday. So. I, I tell you what, if if you can figure out how to make your your products, you know, if they can be sold on the secondary market for more than what they're purchased for, in in the midst of a, a money that's gaining value over time as well, it means you've created something for the ages. That would be a yeah. pretty cool thing to like. Exactly. That would be like the new metric for creating quality products. That even with a money that's getting more valuable, people in years from now are selling it for more than they bought it for. That's yeah, a, I mean, that's like the new gold standard for artistic creation. Yeah. I mean, you can even look at, I mean, it's pretty fiat, but Supreme or Kanye West, like they, they know how to judge the demands and not, 
Like everybody wants to sell out to the demand, like just flood the demand. But no, you can't do that. You have to, you know, keep your, and I even read books on like the Beanie Baby craze. And the problem they all screw up is that they get greedy and they start building the demand, which you just can't get greedy and fill that demand. You got to keep that, oh, that high demand and low supply at all times. And that's my area of expertise I want to get better and better and better at is doing that. And Jesse James, uh, he introduced me to some high end craftsmen who sell knives and, and these guys are like Jerry Fisk. He sells custom knives and he's hmm. like, when I really talked to him, he's like, yeah, I mean, anybody can make a knife after so much practice and so much time, but he's like to sell a knife. That is, that's the name of the game. And he's, he's hmm. like the way he sells the knife is, um, you got to pay him to get into a drawing, which, um, you pay him to get put into a hat and then whoever gets picked out of the hat gets the privilege to buy a knife from him. Hmm. <laughs> so, and then he's like, yeah, I have these like really exclusive, um, night showings where I go to Las Vegas and deal in knives and hotel rooms and stuff. And he's like, if I know there's going to be five customers there, I only bring three knives. So then, Two two guys have to go home empty-handed, and that bids my price up to <laughs> to ten x the the value and stuff like that. So wow. uh, these guys are like animals, sharks about uh, um, building your your sales system into so you have all the leverage. And even me, like I release my products, um, I send out email blasts, and it's first come first serve. And, um, this is like my secret sauce is I send out an email blast, first come, first serve, uh, they call and then, uh, you know, they, uh, well, after the unit sells, I get more calls coming in. And then, uh, once they call and they realize they've missed out on it, cause my stuff usually sells within an hour or so. So, um, once they call and they realize they miss out, then I can just be like, Hey, would you like to get on a VIP list? Uh, so you never have to miss out on one again and then you get top priority and uh you know we can custom make it for you and blah 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 so then uh they put they give me a deposit and they get put up um higher up on the um you know the client list uh and they get Mm. you know more priority and that's how i can build my list keep it exclusive make them feel more special and uh and, and and convert internet traffic into into leads that sell. Well, I appreciate that resource you just gave us a few minutes ago, the luxury strategy. I'll definitely be looking into that. Are there any final thoughts you have for us? I know you've shared quite a bit already. Uh, I really appreciate the insight you've brought. So maybe if you have any final thoughts, share those with us as well as where people can go to find out more about your work and to maybe even get on the email list for a future purchase. Yeah, I mean, you can you can follow me on Twitter at uh, BTC Craftsman. Um, otherwise, by kind of like my portfolio is I'm more of an Instagram guy because record consoles are more visual um, products and they do better on uh, that, that platform. So, um, and it's ATX record on Instagram. Um, and then my, my, my custom line of um, consoles is the Tonin house brand. So yeah, uh, you go on the website, get on the email list and then you'll have to wait. Uh, until I send an email out and then you'll have to call me uh, to uh, to be able to purchase one. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Shay, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Yep. Thank you. All right, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or Shay, you can find our links down in the show notes. If you're interested in one of his consoles, be sure to get on his list and try to get to the VIP list if possible. Also, please do share this with another business owner that you know if it could be beneficial to them. As always, keep building, keep growing, and until next time, keep living and leading well. 
If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today